subject of the local economy. Pat, what, what can the local governments do to help the housing industry and jumpstart our local economy? I'd like to define a little broader question. Of course, what we have now is a doubling of un unemployment. We have 8% unemployment in Manatee County. We, I think there's a lot of things that can be done. The first thing that I would do is try to get the projects that are on standstill uh, out, uh, out through the system. Honore Avenue here in uh, Sarasota County, Fruitvale Road, uh, U.S. Highway 301 in Manatee. Two, I'd address the problems with construction and housing. Uh, I'd try to find a way to make housing affordable. I'd look at the impact assessments, which are um, almost 20% of the cost of our low-cost uh, uh, housing. Three, in Manatee, I think we need to work on some of the business atmosphere that we've created. After all, our um, housing, our juice, our boat building industries, and even our traditional agriculture um, in Manatee is, has lower employment than they've had. And Manatee County used to be able to get away with it all because of the 21% of the people who work in growth and development. But now that that's stopped, uh, Manatee needs to improve its business atmosphere. It used to have a, a much more um, pro-business atmosphere. Third, um, in Manatee, I'm a member of a group that's working on some process improvements to make sure that um, we can get especially infrastructure projects through the Projects Management Department uh, in a shorter time frame. Most of our business is hung up right now in the planning and permitting cycle, and we need to find a way to create private-public partnerships so that the county can go out to private enterprise to create infrastructure projects for Manatee. Do you think that the infrastructure that we have here locally is adequate to support the, the population that we have and the development that we have? Well, no, Ron, at all. Not, not at all. My own view is that we have to mitigate the price or the cost of growth to people, and one of the most serious failures to do that is that we haven't built the infrastructure to accommodate um, what's obviously going to be growth in our marketplace. I think some people have said, well, if we restrict infrastructure, we'll restrict growth, but that hasn't happened. All we've done is had growth based on the market, uh, insufficient changes in infrastructure, and then a decline in the quality of life on the highways, in the sewers here, sewer and wastewater here in Sarasota County, in the schools. We need to build schools in both counties. So um, there's growth. There's a price to pay for it, which for the most part should be paid for by growth, and there should be infrastructure to, to support uh, the new people. Palm Beach County and Lee County, by contrast to our own, have funded their infrastructure needs and uh, not tried to at least restrict growth by restricting infrastructure. One of the things that you have said is that you think there are too many lawyers in local yeah, government. I, don't, I, I say that to anyone who asks. You know our local phone book. Well, why is that has, a problem? I always tell my kids, well, the local phone book's gone from 86 pages to 107 pages of lawyers. You keep track in, of in that? In the time I've been keeping track. Um, lawyers are... Is that a serious question? You want to yes, it is. <laughs> why are there too many lawyers in local government? I mean, why is that a well, problem? Local uh, elected officials draw their, derive their power, their just powers from the people. There's the social contract that Locke and Rousseau wrote about. People elect elected officials uh, to, make de to make decisions for them in this republic. And I believe in the good faith of elected officials to make good decisions. I think in both counties, sometimes those good decisions have gotten hung up by members of the legal staff who either disagree on policy um, criteria or disagree because of process and don't want the decisions implemented. Um, here in Sarasota County, of course, there was a local land use lawyer uh, named Gary Olderoff who I think was able to stop most of the decisions made by the Sarasota County Commission. I think the commission came to recognize that. and. There was a change made with that one individual. Uh, still in all, in a more general sense, I think elected officials are good. I think the decisions they make are proper and valid. And I think lawyers should get out of the way sometimes and help and let them make those decisions. OK, one last uh, question for you. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. Uh, it, there's been a lot of talk about Jeb Bush possibly running for Senate, maybe not. And if he doesn't, Vern would run for Congress. Assuming Vern leaves, do you have any interest in running for Congress yourself? Ron, I was told today that Jeb really was going to run for the Senate. You were. And if that happens, I, the move up that everyone's been predicting uh, here in 2010 probably won't occur. Do you um, think he's going to run? I think Jeb's going to run. I think Vern uh, has a future in politics, too. Um, but I'm not sure that he'd run for the United States Senate against Jeb Bush. I think he would sweep the field. 
if that was the case. Uh, for me, um, I have a lot of ideas. Uh, I'd like to change the world a little bit. I had fun doing that in the 70s and 80s, so I hope I have a future, but I'm not ready to make any declarations just yet. Okay, well, if you do, will you come on the sure, show? I'd, I'd like to be on your show more. <laughs> I've got lots to, lots to say and think about. Great. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Pat. Okay. I appreciate you coming. Thanks for having me. Right. Okay. Now everybody's favorite segment, the Weasel of the Week. Pop goes the pop goes the wine and then the weasel. I see the empty pocket needs a refill. I got a squad with a list of... The Weasel of the Week is uh, Walt Augustinowitz, who we talked about earlier. Look... The, the, the Ron Paul people, uh, the libertarian wing of the Republican Party, uh, the Republican Party should be a big tent, and th those people uh, find their natural home in the Republican Party, but, but uh, they often decry smoke-filled rooms, backdoor deals, this sort of thing. And that's the kind of thing that they don't like, they don't want to see, and they want to change about the party. And then they went ahead and did it themselves. Rather than come in to the Sarasota Republican Executive Committee and announce who they were and what they believed in and that they were libertarians and that they were supporters of Ron Paul, they very quietly and in a sneaky fashion put their candidates on the Republican Executive Committee. Many of them did not file the proper paperwork. Many of them showed up to vote but had not in fact been elected as precinct committee women and committee men. And the slate of officers that they ran had never even hardly we've never seen them at any Republican Executive Committee meeting the Executive Committee is an important guiding body of the party its 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 sole purpose is really to help Republican and Democrat candidates get elected to their respective offices the last thing in the world in the world that you want in in the party apparatus is a group like this taking over and they almost did just that and it would have been catastrophic to the local party we certainly would not want to see that happen to the Democratic Party of Sarasota, nor would we want to, with, with their, with their left, left liberal wing, nor would we want to see it happen to the Republican Executive Committee. It would have been a disaster. And it turned out that the election for chairman was very, very close. Uh, so they did avert disaster. These are people who ran for office who have never done anything for the party, have never volunteered, have never manned phone banks, as far as we can tell, never made a contribution and yet showed up to try to take the party over. So for that, for not doing it above board, for showing up and actually promising the Republican exec Executive Committee you're going to lower the county's taxes, which is kind of crazy, for that, Walt Augustinowitz is our Weasel of the Week. Next week, you are not going to miss our Christmas episode. We have something very special planned. We'll see you then.